been your best defensive half of the season? You say that second half? Uh, probably. Yeah, we didn't have too many breakdowns, finished possessions with rebounds. Um, we were communicating pretty well, so it was a um, solid, solid performance. And I think uh, the first half, we our intensity was there, our focus was there. We just gave up too many offensive rebounds and too many um, kind of broken play, open threes. Uh, and they hit a bunch of them to start and got a lot of momentum, but we just kept staying consistent with it and it worked out. It seemed like um, you guys started to pull away or put your imprint on the game when you transitioned and started getting out and running. Did it take, did it, was it a matter of just getting stops to get to that point or was it a certain effort to just uh, push the ball? That's our MO anyway, but especially against this team, if, um, if we can get stops, especially when they have their bigs out there, um, and the playmakers that we have to secure rebound and just push it and run the wings, that, that's going to work in our favor. But we couldn't get to it in the first quarter because either they were making threes or getting offensive rebounds. So that was uh, a key for us to, to get back in the game in the first half and then to break it open in the second. And, you know, we have to understand eventually we got to start games a little bit better, uh, especially in this building. We've, we've, we've been terrible at that recently. So, um, could be something to work on down the stretch of the season in the playoffs. Steph, what do you see out of Kevin and being able to overcome uh, you know, after missing his first days, I think? That dude's an MVP, has ultra confidence in himself no matter what. Um, and so you're never really worried about him, you know, sulking or getting down on himself or questioning his game at any point. So um, we've all been through it, you know. You have some good looks, they just don't go down, keep shooting. Um, I think for him, he got tonight, he found ways to get into the paint, get to the free throw line, uh, finish around the paint, I mean, around the basket, which opened up other things for him. Um, but he never really worried about him, you know, second guessing himself in that situation or in those kind of situations. How do y'all balance having enough in the tank come May, but making sure you do enough to win games? Say, say that again. I said, how do y'all balance making sure you have something left come playoff time, but make sure you do enough to win games? Just uh, respecting the game, having focus mentally. Um, every night we come out to play and understanding that throughout the course of the season, you know, win or lose, whatever kind of streaks you can put together, whatnot, it's the habits that you're trying to build. Um, first five games, we were, we were awful, taking care of the basketball, defending with a purpose. In the last three, we've been a lot better. Um, and you just keep building. So uh, me and Kay were talking about on the bench tonight. It is tough to you know, still be with November 1st or 2nd, whatever it is, and be looking forward to April, May, June. Um, but having gone through the experience last year and, and three years ago, understanding what it takes to win a championship, um, I mean, it's, it's kind of cliche, but literally every, every game you can learn a little bit of something about yourself and continue to build great habits to to get there, um, and you got to encourage each other to get through the the gauntlet of the NBA season because you know night in night out it, it it could be tough at times to to find that motivation and that energy on a nightly basis. But um, at the end of the day, if we want to win a championship, that's what we got to do. Along those, along those lines, with Spurs not having Kawhi and Tony, is this still a team you'll have to kind of be careful with? Or? One thousand um, percent. That's it's kind of been that way for years now, and. Um, Probably the same this year. They're going to be a threat uh, come to come the end of the season with just the, the pedigree that they have from coaching staff to the players that they have on the, on the squad. And, um, you got to you got to be ready. How so. hyped were you on that uh, Clay Thompson block on Aldridge and Thorne? Looked like you guys had a celebration on that. We were not reacting to the block. We were reacting to Clay's reaction of his own block. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what did he do? He he, uh, he showed the most emotion I think I've ever seen. Uh, <laughs> it was quick because he didn't realize he had the ball, but he got the block, got the rebound, looked at us on the bench, and started like yelling. And and, and his face was crazy. It was uh, it was fun to watch. That's why our reaction was that was that wild. Um, you know, he didn't throw him under the bus, but he was so hyped and excited, he turned it over on the other end. <laughs> so uh, he 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 deserved that one. Though. That was that was uh, or he earned that that turnover because uh, that was a great great defensive play. How much of a groove is he in right now? What do you notice for him? Playing great basketball, shooting with confidence, doing on both ends of the floor. Um, 
and he's under control. That's the biggest thing. He's you know when how defenders are, are are running him off the three point line. He's giving them them uh, the pump face when he knows uh, it's it's time to pull that out, staying uh, you know within himself and uh, making timely shots. And um, he's playing playing amazing right now. So he's obviously a huge catalyst for us. Seth, we saw your tweets, but just what was your reaction when you saw that your name was invoked in the tax proposal? Uh, it was weird. That's about it. it was, uh, I know there's a lot of people uh, <clears throat> wondering why I, you know, I was called out, whatever the case may be, but uh, mama, I made it. <laughs> <laughs>